As we get closer to the trade deadline on Tuesday, the intensity ramps up, the stress levels ramp up, the impatience levels ramp up. Here's my next five picks predictions. Let's go. Players. I mean, the majority of the players that have been moved so far have been pitchers. And uh, I got some more for you here. I got some more offensive players. And things are going to st still pick up. Obviously, trade packages are going to be different. But the, the package already, the asking price for starting pitching, has already been established as high based on the Lucas Giolito trade to the Angels. So with that said, there's a couple of different picks that I think would be or predictions I think would be likely fits. And I'll, and I'll give you a little bit more insight as we get into this. But um, there's still some more left. Okay, so if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do that before you leave. And please hit the like button or the thumbs up if you enjoy the content. So I thank you for both. Well, let's get into this, okay? Pick number one, okay? Heimer Candelario, third baseman. I haven't predicted to come to the Yankees, okay? And for a couple of reasons, because I do think the Yankees are going to trade an infielder, okay? And Candelario is going to be one of few moves that the Yankees make. We'll get into that too. But he'll provide some versatility, some contact inning, and a little bit more speed and athleticism at third base, which will allow the Yankees to be a little bit more. If they move, and I'm getting into this too, if they move and they trade an infielder, a major league infielder, it allows them to shift some players around a little bit, meaning they can use Peraza and Volpe and Candelario at the same time. Okay? That would make a difference. Okay? But Candelario to the Yankees. Now, this is a bigger one. Okay? And this one I can see happening. Justin Verlander to the Texas Rangers. Justin Verlander makes a huge contract, okay, and he's getting high. He's about, about sub two ERA in his last eight starts, so he's down to the low threes now. He's becoming the Justin Verlander that we know. So second half, Justin Verlander catching fire, and the Texas Rangers also have a lot of money, and they're willing to suspend, okay, and they need somebody at this level to replace Jacob Degrom, who's out this year and next for Tommy John. So if you bring in a Justin Verlander. You know, it puts them, it gives them that piece that they need to potentially keep the Astros out of the playoffs. At the very least, relegate them to a wild card instead of winning the damn division. So Verlander I have going. I don't think him and Scherzer are going to get traded. I think they'll probably wind up keeping Scherzer. But Verlander I could see going to, and the Texas Rangers seem to be a perfect fit for him. And the rumors are already circulating right now. Okay, next up, Lane Thomas, outfielder from the Washington Nationals. I'm a Candelario's teammate. I'm going to the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. I think they're going to add another. There's been speculation about them going for Heimer Candelario as well. They already traded for Giolito and another reliever. Um, I can see them bringing in another back because they need to do everything they can to keep <laughs> Choi Otani happy. Okay? And and Mike Trout happy and the rest of them. And they're going to make a run. they got to bring as many pieces as they can. Do I think Lane Thomas will be the only piece? Probably not. Probably not. So, but... It's a sensible piece. It gives them some, a little bit more outfield depth, a little bit more athleticism and versatility, too. Okay. And the hand, uh, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Next up, Labor Torres, the infielder I, I was telling you about. Being traded. There's a lot of rumors circulating this morning in, in baseball circles that he's going to be going to the Miami Marlins. Okay. There's also rumors this morning. I put out a video on this, all right? A short video on this that uh, from Joel Sherman that uh, they're likely going to trade. Estevan Florial, too. Maybe it'll package the two of them. But this is an opportunity for the Yankees to get some pitching, okay? Um, whether it be starting pitching or young arm prospects or relief pitching or something. And Glaber Torres, and I've said this repeatedly, I know he's one of the Yankees' better hitters, but his trade value is never going to be higher. And we're not trading him to because we don't like him. We're trading him because he has a lot of value and he can bring back pieces that the Yankees need. And the Yankees can replace him, okay? They can replace him. And that's key. That's absolutely key. So because, last but not least, the trade I have here, Randall Grichuk. It's the outfit for the Yankees. I know a lot of people think, and his stats, I mean, don't get me wrong. He's, look, he's batting three. I'll give you the stats right now. He's batting 307, okay? He's got, I'm going to pull up the sunglasses for this one here. Batting 307, he's got six home runs, okay? And he's, he's not an elite defender, like, Cody Ballinger. And a lot of a lot of people want Cody Ballinger. Cody Ballinger's batting 317 with 15 home runs and a 2.9 war. Richard has Chris just under a one war. So yes, it's a little bit of a different player. But again, I mean, I tiered it with the outfielders with the Yankees. The premier name to get is Juan Soto. If you can't get him, 
Cody Mellinger's off a great season. And he's just below a one Soto type player. If you can't get him because he's on the high side, if you want to go more, a little bit more uh, fiscally responsible or fiscally conservative, whatever you call it, if they want to tread the line in terms of not exceeding payroll or basically just there, Randall Grichik is the guy to get. Okay, and he also kills left-handed pitching. He hits lefties better than any outfielder that he's had. So, but again, I would be okay with Candelario and Grichik filling in two spots over if we can't get Bellinger. Would I be happy if they got Bellinger? Sure. But if they didn't, if they got Candelario for third base and they got Grichik for left field, and again, you could, they could play him a certain way. I talked about this the other day on, on uh, uh, Jim Riley's Ball Cap Sports podcast. Can, uh, and barreled up podcast and you could play him close to the line because you have an elite defender in uh harrison bader in center field so if anything gets past him to the right he's more likely to catch it. if it goes to the left of him you have him and bader chasing after the ball so it's a better defensive position if he's a red flag in the left field so he can you can use him in a way that doesn't hurt the team defensively and again if you get him there to kill and again you can platoon him with billy mckinney or some of these other folks who write he's better or Jake Bowers, you can platoon them or do anything you want. He's on the cheap, Grichik. So he brings a certain skill set. And if you give uh, Candelario two, you get some defensive uh, versatility. You get some athleticism there with both of them. And they're both going to be free agents. So they're not really you know, hurting themselves long-term here. So those are my trades, okay? My trade predictions, I should say. And these aren't proposals. I think that if, if the teams make these trades, these are likely going to be the destinations I go there. I put out three other videos already, so if you haven't taken a look at those, take a look at them. Got other players, a lot of big players, and there's still more to come. So but that's what I got for you today. And if anything else comes out, you know you're going to get it here. You know that. What we know about now is uh, the last piece before I go is Aaron Judge is predicted to be activated today against the Orioles. They're in Camden now. So yeah, it's not going to be 100%. He's acknowledged it. Everybody knows this. But I'll take 80% of Judge over 100% of most other players. So... But they have to be smart here. Don't risk another setback or even a longer one. If he's not playing well, get, you know, decide to have surgery, please. Okay, so, and again, I think this maybe this is one reason why they're going to try to see him play him here. Because if he's okay, then maybe they don't need to make a, make a bigger move in the outfield. But I've said this yesterday, too. Like, with or without Judge, they still need two bats. Yankees, they still need two bats. And they need to go focus on pitching, too. They need a starter and the reliever, period. You can see the bullpen guys getting taxed. The guys that were more reliable are not as reliable now because they're gassed. So they need to address certain areas. So if I'm them, please call Pittsburgh. Please ask them about David Bednar and Mitch Keller. They're both under control until 2026. And you get your closer right there, and you get another starter you can add to the add to the rotation behind Cole, Rodon. And maybe they're going to – maybe this, you know, this is an opportunity too with them because I've mentioned before – but the pitching prices are high, right? Well, this is an opportunity from the shop, Domingo Herman, shop Luis Severino. Maybe they won't get a ton or King's Ransom, but they could get a better package than we thought of before. So I would keep that in mind as well. Keep our eyes on that too. So have a great day, everybody. Talk to you next time.